As recently as 10 years ago, if you asked the average American what they knew about Korean food, they usually answer dog meat or that smelly kimchi stuff. It seemed like Americans were trying and getting into every other Asian cuisine except Korean. It became the unpopular nerd, or as we say in Korean, the wangta. So even the US Army had a term called to be in deep kimchi. So yes, Korean food was compared to shit. So how did Korean food go from being deep shit to hot shit? Well, let's talk a, bit, a, little bit, a little bit about Korean food. The ancient Chinese actually admired the people on the Korean peninsula for being really good at making booze and fermentation. In fact, there are over 167 documented types of kimchi. Koreans also eat more garlic per capita than anyone in the world. And the peninsula itself is very mountainous. It's very strategically located. And the history is full of international conflicts and very corrupt aristocrats. So Koreans have had to be really creative with making their food. And even though it's considered one of the spicier cuisines, chili peppers did not enter Korea until around the 16th century after a Japanese invasion brought some new world ingredients over. And in fact, the cabbage kimchi we all know of is only around 150 years old. So around the 20th century, the beginning 20th century, Japan colonized Korea. After that was the Korean War, and much of the traditions were lost. And only recently they're getting revived. People like Park Rock Dam, he's reviving the old traditional liquor making techniques. Also, we're reviving royal court cuisine and Buddhist temple cuisine. Um, and Korea went from one of the poorest nations in the world to one of the richest. And the food changed as well. White rice was considered a, a sign of wealth. Uh, meat became more heavier in the, in the diet. And this food got a little spicier. And even the American presence had a little bit of an influence on the cuisine, adding uh, cheese and other meats into it. In fact, one of the first East meets West fusion dishes of the 20th century is a dish called bude chige which means army-based stew. It's basically kimchi with spam and hot dogs in a bowl. Surprisingly really good. But even with this Americanization of Korean cuisines, Americans still thought of Korean food as wangta. So how did it, and, and Koreans themselves didn't at the time have much uh, regard for their own cuisine. In fact, Korean immigrants in America were more likely to open a sushi bar than a Korean restaurant. And Korean restaurants themselves were considered very insular and only catering to other Koreans. But there's a plus side to that. Because instead of Korean food having to adapt to the American palate, the American palate has had to adapt to Korean food. Well, we got the spice in this cupboard. In the past few decades, I would say Americans have become chili files. We love hot food. I would credit food TV programs, travel programs from Anthony Bourdain and Andrew Zimmern, they made a lot of exotic foods a lot more familiar. I would say the dog meat issue is becoming less of an issue, but the only obstacle really has been the fermentation thing. And now I think people are starting to realize that fermentation is not rot. It's a very nice, dark art of bringing out the natural nutrients in foods and make, creating complexity. Our favorite foods are fermented, bread, sourdough bread, wine, cheese. So it's not much of a leap to appreciate the complexities of kimchi and daenjang, the, the soybean paste. So, as, as um, gosh, I forgot. <laughs> Um, so, okay, come 2008, 2009, we saw the fall of the American economy and the rise of Twitter. So you had a bunch of people with smartphones and not much money. So they were using Twitter to find cheap foods. Well, in LA, you have uh, the Kogi Taco truck. And what they're doing, they're using Twitter, and they're serving people Korean food in taco form. And Americans found that they liked kimchi. They became addicted to it, and this food truck started booming around the US. On the East Coast, you have David Chang and Momo Fuku serving his Korean-inspired cuisine, and he started this casual fine dining movement. So suddenly, you have Korean food attached to two major food movements at the same time. 
It was not long after that Donji, a restaurant in New York, became the first Korean restaurant in the world to get a Michelin star. So now I think we're, we're on the verge of it becoming a really big trend. Uh, in Southeast Asia, Japan, it's already getting popular, and it's even showing hints of being popular in India and Europe. In the U.S., it's starting to be incorporated in backyard barbecues. Chefs are starting to use it. It's starting to influence other cuisines, like Southern cuisine. Uh, chefs are making co collard green kimchi and kimchi and grits. And actually, <laughs> one sign of success is that Applebee's chain restaurants are putting Korean food, making Korean tacos. And a great twist that I really like to see is now sushi bars are being converted into Korean restaurants. So I'd say, after being wonked up for very long, Korean food is finally getting the respect it deserves. Thank you. <laughs>